All right, now we're gonna be learning about mixed media on watercolor painting. Watercolor is one of the most versatile art supplies that you can use in the art room. Your art journals just soak up that watercolor. So they make a really fantastic base to then lay other media or materials on top of. So the first thing you're gonna to need to do is you're going to need to actually color every single one of these in. You can use whatever techniques that you'd like. You can use some techniques that you learned about last year. Um, whatever floats your boat, whatever colors float your boat. Don't go too dark. I would keep it a little bit more on the light watery side um, so that we have that nice transparency that watercolors give us. Don't forget when you guys are using class watercolors, it's really important to make sure that you clean your brush in between using every single color. So once you guys have all six filled up, all the white space is covered, uh, wait for this to dry. Probably it'll take like about 10 to 15 minutes and then you can start to do your mixed media on top of the watercolor. All right, now when we are working on our watercolor mixed media, it is important that you have something to draw. It can be something as simple as like, you're gonna be drawing a sphere and showing shadow. It can be something like I did a crystal, I did some bottles, I did some abstract things, a rainbows, some raindrops with shadows. But you wanna try and actually be drawing something because in your journal, you're going to be drawing something. So it helps you understand what these different medias or materials can do on top of watercolor if you're actually trying to replicate something or draw an image. It doesn't have to be something as complex as what I'm going to do, but I'm going to go ahead and in pencil, I'm just going to do the same thing on every square. I'm going to draw some little crystal formation. All right, now that I have an idea of what I'm doing, I'm ready to start working. All right, so we're gonna start with watercolor wash. There's two ways that you can go about watercolor wash. You can create a wash on your actual palette, or you can create a wash on the paper. I'm gonna show you both techniques. So I'm gonna take a nice little dollop of water. Actually, let me do it over here so you guys can see. I'm just gonna take plain old water, okay? And then what I'm gonna do, I wanna put some purples in here. I'm gonna add a drop of that purple to that water, I'm gonna mix it up. That right now is called a wash because it has mostly water and it has a little teeny tiny bit of purple. I'm gonna do that with a couple different colors. All right, so now comes the magic of watercolor. If you've ever looked at my bulletin board that's behind my computer, I do a ton of watercolor. I love watercolor washes. The whole beauty of watercolor is that watercolor is transparent. It is see-through because water is the main element in it. So when you do watercolor washes, you're basically doing layer after layer after layer, but the beauty of it is the layers don't cover each other. The layers allow you to see through it. So you get this really rich complexity. The first thing you can do with a wash is you can just paint with the wash that you have. Now, when I paint with this red, it obviously makes the red that's already on my paper a little bit more intense, but then with my orange that's already dry, it now is creating like a red orange. I'm still seeing these layers of orange and how the orange interacted with the red on top of it. Now, the other cool thing is you can do and or you can use complements. So like the opposite of orange is blue. If I use that, it's gonna create a nice neutral. I'm painting with blue, you guys are seeing this, right? I'm painting with this blue that's right here. It is changing to look like a gray and that's because the transparent orange mixes with the transparent blue and creates like a transparent gray. If you want the blue to be more intense, you can straight use blue and you can see it a little bit better, obviously, okay? And you can kind of mix it in with that wash, but you still are gonna always have that kind of graying effect because whatever color's on the bottom is going to mix with the color that you're putting it on. Now, the other way to create a wash, if you don't like to do this, which I don't always like to, sometimes I just like to work like really intuitively, is you can take just the straight color and I'm just going to paint it straight on. So I'm gonna paint it on this edge here, okay? So this is a very intense yellow. I don't wanna leave that. I'm gonna get my brush and I'm gonna put, this is only has water on it. So I'm gonna dip the brush right on my surface and then I'm just gonna kind of pull 
that yellow line that I did. So I'm just gonna continue to kind of work in washes. It's really helpful if you don't want your areas to bleed into each other, make sure that they're dry before you go to them. Next technique is with watercolor pencils. Ooh, ah. Um, you know that these are watercolor pencils. Honestly, they look just like Crayola pencils, but they're going to say watercolor like this. They have a little watercolor and a little brush, and that tells you that you need water with them to access them. The watercolor crayons are a little bit uglier. <laughs> they look like a crayon, but they kind of look a little bit strange. So what's really cool about these is these both have watercolor pigment in them that when you add water, it turns into watercolor paint. So I know some of you guys don't love watercolor because you could even tell when I was doing this, you feel like you don't have a lot of control. Watercolor pencils to the rescue. So I'm gonna color this uh, crystal right here just how I normally would with colored pencil. With good coloring skills, I go around the edges and then I fill it in. It can go as hard or dark as you like. The harder that you press, the more intense the color will be in that area. That'll be like a shaded area. I'm gonna do the same thing with my watercolor crayons. I'm gonna color these different sections. Now with the watercolor crayons, you have to tilt the crayon on an angle to get that nice sharp edge, but you can go as light or dark as you want. Now, I recommend using a smaller brush and you're going to just get some water, try and stay in one section at a time. And once I add water and work it in a little bit, my watercolor pencil becomes watercolor. So what's so fantastic about this is if you can get the effects of watercolor, you know, that flowy water <laughs> like texture, but you are, can get a little bit more precise with it. Uh, it works the same way with layering. You still see through the yellow. You still see through um, the orange that's on here. So you still get all that fun color mixing, but things kind of stay put a little bit better. Um, and also a lot of times you can create shading in one basically swipe because of the way that you color it. If you do it really intense, like I did at this blue on this side, but lighter on the other side, then it reflects that when you add the paint to it. I know that these watercolor crayons like don't look the prettiest, but boy, let me tell you, they are very bold colors. They are almost more colorful than the watercolor pencils. So Next is probably my favorite, any of these things that are here. Um, these all work really well. So something I love about using Sharpie on top of watercolor is Sharpie normally, especially like these big ones, can sometimes have a little bit of bleeding that happens. When you put the watercolor down, the paper absorbed the watercolor, kind of like a sponge almost. So a lot of the um, suction up quality of the paper has already been absorbed. So when you go and draw a line, I'll just draw a straight line over here, it's not as bleedy as what it normally is. So when you use that Sharpie marker, you get a little bit more of a crisp line over watercolor and less of that bleeding that tends to happen when you just use this naturally. Now I will tell you, you guys can see what just happened, is sometimes your marker runs out a little bit and that's because it's picking up little teeny tiny pigments of the watercolor and it's running out a little bit. You just go to the side, and it starts working again. So my favorite material to use over a watercolor wash, like what we did a very light watercolor, is just any sort of pen. Um, I love these Sharpie pens. It's like an ice skater going across the ice. I also just like like regular Bic pens are really nice, but if you wanna create some really detailed um, hatching lines, cross hatching lines, and things like that, you can do some really nice work with just a really simple pen. So I'm just gonna have a little bit of fun with my crystals right now. A Krill marker works beautifully over watercolor. And that is because Krill markers are water soluble. So inside of here is something that is watery. A marker can actually be turned into watercolor, especially if you're someone that doesn't have watercolors at home. 
they work great. So here's what it looks like just dry. Uh, it makes really insanely crisp lines. Um, because watercolor and Crayola markers have similar stuff going on on the inside, Crayola markers actually work better over watercolor than Sharpies do. I know that this is like mind blowing because everybody always thinks Sharpies go over everything. Crayola markers are the jam, guys. Seriously. They are amazing. Even when you uh, have colors that go on top, you get that cool transparent look, just like what we were talking about with watercolor washes and things like that. Now, here's where it gets insanely cool. This pink that I just did, I'm gonna just take a little bit of water on my brush and I'm gonna activate the paint and it's gonna turn into watercolor. It's gonna bleed a little bit. Now, this is not working as well because I'm not as like quick with it, but you can see that I've now turned you can start to see at least that some of the pink is bleeding and creating like a purple on sort on my colors. Now, it works better if you are a little bit quicker. So let me do like a quick triangle up here. And then before it has a chance to soak in, work with that color and kind of work it out. So I'm pulling that pink down to here. Now, what works best is like what I did here. I took a little bit of that teal and I put it on a clean part of my palette. I'm gonna add a little bit of water and I have turned a Crayola marker into watercolor that I can paint with. And if you intentionally want something to bleed, you can get that effect with like flooding is what we call it flooding the paint. So I'm just gonna do like a, a blue shape over here and I'm purposely gonna let it go out just so you guys can see. I'm gonna get this wet, very wet, <laughs> and I'm gonna let it bleed, which means it's gonna get absorbed into the paper. So you guys can see where I put water is now pulling the ink that was in the Crayola marker and going to the side. So there's a lot of possibilities that you guys can do with Crayola markers. Not All right, color pencil and color sticks. This is a favorite of um, artists that are called illustrators. It is something that Mrs. Cantrell and I love to do. Um, it really creates just a beautiful brightness to your pieces. It's really fun to paint something in watercolor and then draw over it with your like really expressive lines and stuff, but with color sticks or color pencils. So. You guys can use color, make sure they are not watercolor, make sure they're the ones that are actually Crayola pencils, or you can use these things that are called color sticks. Color sticks are really cool because you can use them on the side to create like a rubbing type texture. Uh, I like to use colors that are not actually similar to the ones I'm doing, colors that are gonna be a little bit brighter. So I'm gonna be using the pink color stick and I'm just going to color just like I've been doing on all these different things. And I'm just gonna do some of my shading techniques. So it really allows you to have a lot of flexibility, a lot of possibilities here. The last technique is to use acrylic over watercolor. Acrylic is opaque, watercolor is transparent. They are opposite, okay? So in acrylic paint, there's plastic and there's white. That makes it show up really well. In watercolor, you have the water, which makes it transparent. So when you put acrylic over watercolor, you don't have that see-through effect, like we had one watercolor on top of watercolor. You have, boom, here is what we're doing. A lot of times people will like to use like a white paint or a black paint over colors that they do so that they're nice and dark and intense. When you are using the paint, make sure that it is on a damp paper towel that's over a tray. Remember when you get your paint, when you get your paint, you don't need very much. This is like the size of a dime. And when I'm painting with this color, I only want to paint with the tip of my brush, but I can just paint right where my lines are. So that completes
all the different techniques that you can use on tight on top of watercolor i can't wait to see what you guys create always feel free to if you think like hey i want to use watercolor pencil and crayon with watercolor wash you could always mix these techniques together too and create some really interesting projects have fun experiment uh keep your possibilities open and good luck